So this is the start of Ashley, the Cocker Spaniel. Now, I've already sketched it out and I'm going to start putting the pans on. I've put a palette together of what I think is in the picture. So we have the Dion Oxide, Orange Extra Dark, Burnt Sienna Shade, Raw Umber, Burnt Sienna, Dairy Light Yellow Shade, Burnt Sienna Tint, Raw Umber Tint, Yellow Orc Tint and Orange Tint. These will be for the gingery red colours and these will be the lighter ones. Might not use them all and then again I might use them all but this is what I think I can see in the actual portrait and some colourless blender because that works well. I'll probably need a white for lightening the areas as well so I'll just show you the picture. This is on my iPad. So, bit of the reflection there. So you can see there's a lot of reds in there. That's better. Okay, just pop that back a minute. And then we can get some colours on. And get started. I've got my usual, I've just put new ones on because they don't last five minutes. So I've got the soft palette knives, the square because they fill in a lot of room, and this one for just adding little touches in the darker areas. So I'll get some colourless blender on first. I'm literally just gonna apply it to most of the places where I know I'll be blending the colours in with another colour. It just really makes it spread. I've always used white, but obviously with white, it sort of makes the colours milky into white, and the colourless blender doesn't. It keeps the colours true, true to their actual colours, but with the beauty of being able to blend across the paper effortlessly with the colourless blender on so obviously you can't see anything at the minute because it is colourless now then so if I just get all this on around the head to start with it's a very very slight tint to the paper just because the paper is actually um, high white it's Saunders Waterford uh, so it is slightly you've got a very very it looks a bit like if you've got a titanium buff in the luminance it's as light as that onto your paper this colorless blender is so you can barely see it so the ears are really really curly so i'm not looking to put a lot of depth on there with the base layers because i've mapped out where a lot of the curls are and I need to still be able to see them with a pencil so we shall see I'm going to try and record the whole of this dog as I go so obviously it'll be over the course of a week or more and hopefully then You'll have a step by step in real time and then I'm going to ask for some help and try and find out how to put it all together and make it into a shorter film. Right, let's give that a go. So. Now I normally put the darkest colour on first and then lighten it but I think I'm going to start with, what colour is that? Orange tint, I think it is. Yeah, orange tint. What well, says orange tint, but not, none of these colours are ever what the name actually is. I don't think so, anyway. 
it's quite misleading and i've also got what i call cream here which is the yellow orc tint that'll be used as my lighter color i see here now i will i can see i'll definitely have to put some white in to lift this which is fine it's just i haven't put it in my palette might stop and start this video we'll do it in several several sections because for some reason my computer has a habit of crashing and once you've drawn it obviously i can't go back and start again and i am against the clock with the next two portraits there's no time for stopping and starting so yeah it looks as if this yellow orc is quite a good likeness definitely will be fine with the uh, white on the top and then the orange tint just puts that steady red into it now i'm going to stick with the lighter colors for a minute because i'm going to use the same palette to put the darker colors on so I'll just get them down first. Now this colour is what I normally use for skin tones, which is the burnt sienna tint. Because down here on this area, it is quite light and I shall be using my indenting tool to make the hairs stick out on this one. We we'll just get this base layer in. So building it up a bit with pans will speed things up a bit. And I think I'm gonna have to get my white, the orange tint. With the colourless blender, it just it smooths the paper for blending. I was never bothered about it before, but once I've collected the old set and I was missing buying anymore, I thought, oh, I'll try it then, just give it a go. And yeah, I'm quite happy with it. Now, this is, that's, I think that's an orange shade. Orange extra dark, that one is. It's like a, a orangey brown. And that's the burnt sienna so as you can see i've got those two colors there so i'm just gonna try on the paper over here <clears throat> right need something in between that really that just needs to be lighter And I'll start to lose my lines here a bit, so need to be careful. Because the paper is smooth as well, it just with the colourless blender on it makes the the pans stretch further then you can really fade it out where you need it so as of now i would recommend the colorless blender if you want to keep your colors as they are because that's really worked for me now this area it's red but it's got a, a goldy goldy colour in with it so we're gonna go and have a bit of 
what is it? Fluoride yellow shade. I'll try a bit of that. It's basically just adding a few of the colours and blending them together and seeing what it gives you. So now this is where I'm going to need the white on there. I do love using pan pastels. They're just so much fun to use. Oh, my elbow just slipped off the bar now and I've dotted it. I'll get rid of that in a minute. If you just think that you're painting, just feel like you're painting or you're using a pen and just do it in the same way that you would if you were, you know, putting your details in. And that helps you get the hang of applying your pan pastels because I was, and still do, sort of slap it on and move it around a bit. And then I just, I don't worry about it because I rely on my pencils to do the work after but if you want to use your pans you know more deeply and apply more rather than making it predominantly pencils then just just sit and take your time and apply them like you would your pencils a bit at a time and it's so much fun Because you can put detail in. You've seen some of the people's work on our group, our Facebook group, which is Pam Pastels Creations. And there's some amazing work on there. What some of the people are doing with them are just amazing. Really inspiring. So if you want to come along and find the group on Facebook. Or drop me a message if if you want the link and I can send you the link for Pam Pastel Creations. We're getting up to 2000 members now as well. So it's a fairly diverse group of people using Pam Pastel for all sorts of things. I'll keep watching the time on this video and I'll do, I'll try and do half an hour, 35 minutes on each and then I shall stop it and start again. Just in case my computer decides to crash, as it always does. And I've got nothing else on, nothing else is running, so it's not, it's not, I once thought it was a memory issue. Who knows with computers? deeper red up here which is the burnt sienna that's working really well in the areas that are more red and we've got let's just get a bit of that because there's a quite a bright area there 
blend it in. You can see from the video what colours I'm going back and dipping into onto the palette. Back up to the burnt yellow. Now we've got an eyebrow there needs a bit of red. I like the square ones, the flat square ones, because you can do a larger area by rubbing the whole of the sponge on the page. Because so I don't like those big, the big applicators. I've got more control with these, but then you can use the tip, either the corner for dotting, or I just I like using the edge to like create strokes, like hair strokes, and getting the direction of the fur in the right way as you can see it just makes the air direction obvious Got to say, this is Saunders Waterford Hot Press, so it's a smoother surface. Right, uh, probably a bit of oh, no, that's too. That's too dark. What about the red? Yeah, that's better. And also, if you find you've put too much on, you can always get your your eraser, put your rubber or battery eraser, and just lift it off. I forgot which one I was in there, was it that one? No, it was that one. So this is the red iron oxide extra dark, I think. Whatever I said it was earlier. <laughs> it's working. So colours that you think aren't really don't sound like they would be right for this or look on the surface that they wouldn't be right you just need to try them because sometimes clearly they are and you can tone them down with other colours because obviously you've never it's hardly ever that you've ever got the exact spot on colour that you want but then that's the beauty of blending it's nice to be able to blend the colours to what you want. Yeah, we've got the cream, 
creamy red going on here. So. On 20 minutes now, so we'll get the face in and we'll come back to the ears. I like to put a darker colour over the areas where they're going to be like light hairs and whiskers because then you can take that off then with your with your eraser and it's just so much fun and the, the effect looks really good <coughs> you can see she's coming to life now healthy we'll have a bit of that and a bit of that. Especially on all these curly hairs here, and you can just like put them back in the lighter areas with the white uh, with the rubber eraser. There we go bright little bit there Normally when I do an underpainting I'm not so detailed and mindful of where I'm putting things because it is just an underpainting but I really want to try with this to really use more of the pan pastels in the picture and let them be more work more and be softer. So I would love to just draw a whole piece in pan pastels I'll note up with this one obviously because I want all the details in this one and I need my pencils for that These are the darker areas meeting.
to the areas around the eyes, the darker parts. So I'm going to come back into these, do the eyelids. over there because we'll put the highlights in around the eye with the, the eraser just looking right at me aren't you Ashley really dark areas in the eye I shall leave for the pencils because it's where the detail will all come from you know, it's quite a bright area of gold there's a Tasmanian devil that's my husband texting <laughs> so even when he's not here he always has to disturb me Yes, I'm very disturbed. Right, we're at 27 minutes now on the filming, so I might call this face done and then we can start again and we'll come back. Part two. So I'm just so worried the computer's going to die on us I don't want to take any chances I'll get this in and then I'll come back and do the white areas that I need to do to lighten it No mess at all. It'll work at this angle without it all just going everywhere. I'll just love them.
Okay, I think we've got what we're needing. Yeah, you can see all the different contours in the face with the different shading. Well, I'll start the area off for the face and give us a base to start with. Okay, thanks for joining me. Give me a like if you enjoy what, what you're seeing um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tips and work in progress. Okay, thanks.